What is going on and welcome back into Bio Studios. Now in this video, we're gonna be making a very simplified LED circuit for the Austin Powers 3D Tumblr. Yes, check out that playlist on my homepage. Make sure you subscribe and like, and let's get into the content. Now, as I stated before, we are gonna be jumping straight into the content here. And now we already have the LED housing already built out of Sculpey Original, DOS Air Dry Clay, as well as some liquid clay. That has its own individual video, so make sure you go back in the playlist. I'll link that above and check that out. Now, we're gonna be using Edgelick. Edgelick? Sounds close enough. LEDs from Amazon. Now, as you can see, these are 9 to 12 volt LEDs. They will not work with your standard uh, uh, AAA and AA batteries. So whatever size of LEDs you decide to use for your project, just make sure you get the right pack that you need. I will be using these with a 5.5 millimeter uh, connector on the end of this. You'll see that here, uh, make an appearance here in a little while. So just be aware we'll loop back around that in a few moments. Now, one thing that you'll notice here is my LED bulbs that we made out of resin in the previous vi uh, video of this playlist do not match the exact ones that Austin Power had in the actual prop for the movie. These are also substantially larger. I really wanted them to be very dominant when the LEDs are on the project. And I really wanted them to be bright up on my shelf when I say Alexa Studio on. It just really shines real bright. Now, I also did decide to use just bulbs that really blend well with the existing Flynn Sister epoxy poured uh, bulbs that we made. Uh, in the previous video, we drilled holes in those and we have them all kind of adhesive to the actual housing itself and they're really ready to go. All we gotta do is put the bulbs in and then they glow. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the soldering station turned on here, get it heated up, get it ready to go. Uh, and we're just gonna make this a very simple LED circuit here. So we're gonna do some soldering in just a moment. So I did pull out three LED bulbs there. Again, just remember that those are nine to 12 volts. So it takes a bit of power to power those things up, but they can also last a lot longer. They also are very, very bright in comparison to some of your battery operated lights. And I just really like how, how well they glow when they glow. You'll see at the very end of the video, so make sure you stay tuned. So as we strip some of the, the wiring away here uh, and get this ready to be uh, spliced in, the colors that we have here are a red, we're gonna go ahead and get that into position. I'm just kind of measuring off how far I want to. I want the, the wiring to come down loop and then we're gonna do a pigtail. Uh, some people call it a rat tail splice or a pigtail splice, um, but it, it just kind of butts them all together when we twist them together. Then we're gonna go with a bright white. I decided to go with bright white just cause it stood out a little bit more in, in the shelves than the warm light. Once we get that done, we're going to go ahead and kind of sit those into the soldering loop there, the little, little uh, spool of solder that I have there. And I'm just going to go ahead and just micromanage some of the, the, the wiring here. Now, a lot, you don't really have to do this, but I just felt like going above and beyond. And I really find it satisfying to be able to use heat shrink to kind of manage some of these wires. So all I'm doing is I'm just cutting one little inch segment of clear uh, uh, shrink wrap heat shrink into and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply that to the actual wiring themselves. So I'll just go ahead and string in one piece of each one and that's gonna uh, put those on the tip and the ring of each LED individually. I'm not gonna tie the LEDs all four together right now. I just don't feel like that's a necessity. I'm gonna go ahead and put one on the end of the actual, uh, the, the power lead that's coming from the power adapter on the back of the housing there. And then what we'll do is we'll kind of separate these out and I'm gonna use my uh, my heat gun from my soldering station to go ahead and heat these up. I do have the, the narrow nozzle there. Look how easy that is. Hit it with a, a quick heat and it kind of just seals it all together. It keeps those wires from pulling apart, being messy and just going all over the place. I really do like the clear uh, heat shrink. It looks really cool. And I think it looks very professional, you guys. Getting that done there. Now, a lot of my heat shrinking here is in real time. I just find it very satisfying. Maybe in the future, as I kind of get caught up on all my projects, I might just make just a heat shrink only video where I'm just heat shrinking a bunch of a bunch of heat shrink onto like just wires. And that's all the video would be. And it's like for the guys out there, like for the guys, like there's all those videos of like people breaking like the big pieces of ice on the concrete. It's just supposed to be like super satisfying. I feel like that's what heat shrink is like anybody else out there when you hit that that wire with the heat shrink and it like just slowly like tightens up it's just so satisfying and i don't know let me know in the comments do you guys girls do y'all feel the same way 
I really think that the the clear uh, heat shrink is really professional looking. You really don't notice it unless you're looking for it, but it just really looks good. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna kind of loop all my wires down. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of coil them around and we're gonna kind of trim them to, to size there just so they're really nice, neat and tidy. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll strip each one individually and we're gonna make the uh, the rat tail or pigtail, whatever you are, however you say it, um, that's, you know, wherever you are, that, that, that terminology may be different for wiring people or, or people who do electrical or, or wiring work. Um, it doesn't really matter. Basically, instead of like butting the two ends of the wires together uh, and then twisting them together and having like one continue into the other, we're going to kind of just like butt them all up on the same um, uh, measurement there and then we're just going to twist them all together and it creates like a rat tail type of wiring it is really nice it's nice tight and neat and you'll see that here shortly as I, you can see i'm just kind of like stripping this away here just kind of getting everything ready uh, for us to do that butt splice there spreading each individual wire there tips and rings make sure we get them all in the right the right combination there uh, if you were to reverse any of these then the leds would not work and you would have to cut that apart and then measure again and then cut them all if you wanted them all to be the same length and nice neat and tidy like i said i really want them to like fit in the housing very neat and tidy like so that's why they're all measured to the right length uh, go ahead and give that a lot of pressure as i kind of spin those around and create that pigtail rat tail whatever you want to call it and we'll do the same thing for the tip side spreading those apart there and then we'll get those all wrapped in together before we begin any kind of soldering now this is almost the first time i've used my soldering station once before i think this is like the first time i've really done it for a real project here the rest of it was just kind of small stuff like nothing that required like multiple leds it's really cool to be able to pull the station out and really get it heated up. It's much more of a high grade quality than my just regular solder that I use a lot of times like out out, out on, the, on the boat trailer or, uh, or any trailers around the house or things like that. This is a really nice station and I'm so excited to be able to use it here for something like this. And I'm able to share it with you guys. So let's go ahead and crank up the soldering side here. And what I'll do is I'll grab my soldering wire here and I only like to heat it up just enough so that the solder melts. Uh, we don't want to overheat it. There's no point in doing all that. It's really not necessary. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll kind of zoom in here and there as we go through this process. I do believe I left this in real time. Uh, so just be aware that that's where we are at this point in the video. We're jumping from like a time, time lapse type of speed into more of a real time just because I think that this is really satisfying. And I don't feel like there's enough videos online of people assault, doing solder work. I feel like that this could be more covered more, especially when it's something simple like this. Anybody who's like looking at my shop, my, my shop, <laughs> my website. Okay, yeah. Look at my website, you guys. Anybody who's checking out my uh, YouTube channel here for and want to learn more about LEDs or or LED housings out of clay or anything like that, eventually it'll lead you to to wiring like this, soldering, LEDs and things. And I just really want to keep a lot of these videos quite simple. So uh, in, in the future, I'll probably try to incorporate more uh, soldering and LEDs uh, circuits into my, my projects here. Uh, I'll probably eventually want to start uh, incorporating like, like pulsing lights and, and timers and things like that. But as of right now, it's just a simple video and I hope you guys really enjoy it. So as you can see there, I'm just letting that little ball of, uh, of melted solder there stay on the end of the soldering iron. I'm just kind of r rippling that back and forth until I really feel like it gets an overall good coverage over the wire jacket there. You want to make sure that it's actually getting inside the wires as well in between them and it's just creating a nice strong bond. Uh, if it were to get like uh, an adequate coverage, then eventually it could kind of break apart uh, and it would just give you uh, a bad uh uh, conductivity so we want to make sure that it has good conductivity through all of the circuits uh, and then that will be uh, something we check as well before we kind of put it all together in its final form and then epoxy the housing to the actual main tumbler if i ever need to cut the main housing apart then i have to use like a little uh, little uh, router tool or something to do that with a saw blade on the end of it just to kind of cut it away from the existing epoxy and then i could kind of mend it again later it's no problem it's not it's kind of an inconvenience but it would work out quite well and then as we finish this up, I'm just getting get that little drop of uh, solder off there so it's nice, neat, and tidy. And then what we'll do is we'll heat shrink the end of each individual rat tail before we kind of heat shrink them together just to keep them like nice, neat, and tidy together. We just want to make sure that those leads do not touch each other in any way because then it would just short itself out. 
All right, so as we go ahead and put the soldering iron away here, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put the, some heat shrink on here. Uh, now, originally I put some heat shrink on there and I, I thought I was gonna do a different type of splice, but I just decided to change it. So I had to cut the cut that, uh, that heat shrink off and kind of waste it. But as you can see, we're just using a red and a black to signal the tip and the ring there. Uh, and or, or power in the ground or however you want however you want to say it there i i used to usually say tip and ring because I'm, I'm from the it field and i work on phone lines a lot but um we're going to use the heat gun here for my soldering station and we're going to go ahead and melt that out look how satisfying that is you guys that is absolutely awesome i love how it just gives a nice clean tight hug onto the existing wiring there looks really good and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and kind of sl slide both of those into a larger piece here and this is just going to just hold them together it's not super tight it's not like the exact size it probably needs to give it a really really strong tight seal to each other but it's no big deal i'm not really worried about that as long as the soldering and everything holds steady and they're there's they're isolated inside the jacket itself of the heat shrink then we're good as you can see here everything was measured out remember we're making sure that those leds are pushed down into the the uh, flynn sister resin poured uh, uh bulbs that we made then uh then there it is right here you guys so there's the led housing as well as the flynn sister epoxy bulbs that we made and then here it is with the power supply now this power supply that i have from the external uh the mail in is not going to be the one i use i need to get a right angle one due just to due to how tall the actual uh the tumbler is uh and then we'll and then we'll do in the next video is we'll go ahead and do final assembly as well as a absolute glass like layer of flynn sister epoxy and some gaskets uh, when I do that, it will also bring all of the luster back to the sanded uh, LED uh, resin bulbs that we made. But otherwise, I think it's a really cool project. And I, I really do enjoy using the soldering station to make this. Uh, let me know in the comments, are you doing soldering in any of your work? Make sure you subscribe and like, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out, guys.